making the Nubu tank top. What do you think? <laughs> Ever since the Tiffany top, I've been itching to make another top and the Nubu tank top does not disappoint. It's going to be an excellent addition to my wearable collection because it is beautiful, it is comfortable, and it is easily adjustable, which was super important to me. So I have a long torso. And so it was important to me to make a long top. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. <laughs> but if you don't want your tank top this long, just don't make as many rows and make it as sh long as you want it to be for your body. Also, if you want your tank top to be wider, just go ahead and adjust the number of stitches or a number of chains that are in your foundation row. If you want to change the strap, make it longer or wider, I will show you how to do that in the tutorial itself. Everything about this tank top is adjustable because I understand that there are so many different shapes and sizes of human. I want you to be able to make a tank top that is comfortable for you. All right, so the level of crochet pattern this is, is an advanced beginner level crochet pattern because it's super easy peasy. It's really just half double crochet stitches that are worked between stitches, not on top of stitches. That way it has this interlocking look, which I think is really pretty, really flattering and a lot of coverage here. Uh, it's really just kind of a matter of joining the sides, working the shaping, adding the straps. And that's why I say, you know, it might be a little challenging for an absolute beginner, but an advanced beginner who's worked with stitches for a little while, little while might be able to understand certain parts to this tank top and be able to accomplish it. That was my goal. Make it easy. The terminology is U.S. terminology. So whenever I'm referring to the name of a stitch, it's in U.S. terms. The different sizes of this tank top. I have a chart in my pattern that has the different size range from extra small to 5XL. Feel free to adjust it however you want. Don't just rely on the sizing chart. The sizing chart is a good guide, but doesn't need to be something that you rely heavily on. The pattern can be found in both the description section and the comment section below this video, where all you have to do is click the link. It'll take you to my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, where you can find the pattern, buy the pattern, print the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. When you're ready to go, let's go ahead and dive into what materials I use to make the new boo tank top. Ha! <laughs> When making the Lush Simple tank top, I knew that it was going to be a wearable. I knew it was going to be a tank top, something I'd want to wear when the weather was warmer outside. So I took into a lot of consideration which yarn I wanted to use that would feel comfortable against my skin. I didn't want anything irritating my skin, especially when you don't want to be wearing layers when it's warm outside. You want something very comfortable. And after a lot of looking, I found the Lion Brand Nubu yarn and I fell in love. I knew it was perfect just doing the feel test this yarn is so comfortable against your skin. It almost has a cooling effect to the material itself, which is extremely welcoming when it comes to warmer weather. But at the same time, I found when I was wearing the demo that it still like complemented the temperature of your skin. You know what I mean? It, but it was never uncomfortable. I thought it was amazing. This is 100% lyocell yarn. It's a plant-based yarn. So it's not an animal fiber. It's a size four weight worsted medium Aran 10, 12 ply or eight WPI sized yarn. So it's a size that I'm comfortable working with. I've used it a lot. And then the care instructions are really easy. It's machine washable on the gentle cycle and then you just lay it flat to dry. And I was like, perfect, it's not complicated. So for a wearable, I didn't want anything to shrink with the cotton and I wanted to make sure it was very comfortable without having some tedious care instruction. The crochet hook that we are using is the I9 or the 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. I liked this size with the four weight yarn so that the stitches were drapey, they were loose. Again, everything we want about something that we wear is comfort. And so we want those stitches to be comfortable. So that's why I did the I9. Pair of scissors, obviously, and a yarn needle or tapestry needle. We're basically making two panels we are joining together and so the yarn needle is going to help us join those two panels together and then weave in all of our ends. I'm going to have links to everything you see here in the description section and comment section below this video. So if you're having
having trouble getting your hands on anything, just click on that link, purchase the item, and have it shipped directly to you. If you want to make any substitutions, maybe you are having a hard time with Nubu, finding Nubu yarn, or you just wanna use what you have in your stash at home, I'd say that this is a thin size four weight yarn. It's almost closer to a three for me. So a thin four or a three weight yarn, I'd substitute that way our sizes are similar in what you finish, your finished project looks very similar to the size in the chart that I made for you. All right, when you're ready to go, let's get started making this lush, simple tank top. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, so there are multiple different sizes of tank tops that you can make with this pattern. If you look at the chart in my pattern, you will see lots of different size options that you can make. And next to that size option, you're going to see a bust dimension, you're going to see a length dimension. So honestly, before you even pick what size, like I always wear a medium or I always wear a large, take a quick measurement to make sure you're finding the right size that is going to work best for your body. That way you don't make a size and you're like, that ended up being way too big or that ended up being way too small. All right, so hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Now, if you look at the sizing chart and you're not finding the size that you want or you wanna deviate and make something that's gonna fit you differently, we are going with a multiple of two. So you're gonna start with a chain that is divisible by two, okay? Also in that chart, when you find the size you want, it'll have a foundation row chain count. Go with that chain count right now. Okay, so starting with the tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project, slip knot, attach crochet hook. And I'm basically gonna make a small demo example. It's gonna look like doll clothes, just so we can get through the project faster. And I'm gonna start by chaining 26. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 25, 26. All right, we are now ready for row one. For row one, we are going to make a half double crochet stitch in the second chain from our crochet hook. Looking at those V stitches, one, two. There we go. And all we are doing for row one is making one half double crochet stitch in every chain or every stitch space all the way across. That's all we're doing. So go ahead and take a second and make one half double crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. Now I do want to mention right here, what you may run into is this Nubu yarn is splitty. It unfortunately is. It's beautiful, soft, luscious yarn, but it's splitty. So if you are having an issue with your yarn splitting, then go slow, take your time with these stitches, try to be forgiving with this yarn a little bit because we want the way it feels. There's something about this yarn we do want. So it may slow you down, which may be a bummer, but it'll be okay. We will get through this together. See, like right there, I just kind of split the yarn a little bit, back it up and just keep going. This is almost going, this project is almost going to force you to be a little patient. You aren't gonna have to worry about counting so much, so that is a relief, believe me. But what you will need to do is just be cautious about the yarn and its splittiness. See, even right there, just make sure you go slow and get through all of the strands. All right, last stitch of row one here. We are now ready for row two. What we will do for row two is we will chain one, we will turn our work, and for this particular pattern, we are working half double crochets for the entire pattern, but it's the placement that's different. We are working our stitches between stitches, not in the top of stitch spaces. So, go ahead and yarn over. Find the two half double crochet stitches from the row below, and we're gonna place our half double crochet between those two stitches. We are working between stitches this entire pattern. So again, yarn over, not working the top, the top. We're gonna find the posts and work between the stitches. Now working row two is the most difficult. After row two, it gets a lot easier to see where the stitches are and working between them. So it's really just figuring it out 
for row two. If you need help, I did make a whole video on stitch placement and working between stitches, and I'll put it here at the top of the screen. If you're just struggling with this step and you need a little more assistance, that video will be a great reference for you. But again, we are working between the stitches. And this is going to cause the stitches to push out, like have more of a gap between them, which is going to be very nice. And it'll have more of this interlocking look opposed to just the straight stitch on top of stitch on top of stitch look. Remember to go slow. That way we don't have the issue of the splitty yarn. All right, the end of row two here. It will look like we are just placing a stitch on top of the stitch. And if you need to, honestly, especially for row two, if it's gonna help you out, go ahead and place your last stitch on top of the last half double crochet, but really we are trying to place our last stitch between those turning chains and the first half double crochet stitch. Okay, something else for you to take into consideration. We got our foundation row chain. For me, it was 26, okay? Row one, we'll lose one of those chains, one of those stitch spaces, and I will have a total of 25 half double crochet stitches in row one. Row two through the end of your section, your rectangular section that we're gonna make, every single row should have the same number of stitches created that we did in row one. So for me, every single row that I am going to be making for my rectangular section will have 25 stitches in it. So make a note, write it down. If it's on the chart, Maybe highlight which size you are making, that way you know the number of stitches that need to be in every single row, okay? That way you can periodically count the number of stitches are in your row to make sure you're staying on count. Now, what's gonna be great about this particular pattern is you won't have to count how many stitches are in every single row. So that's gonna be great. Huge relief, we can have an applause here. <laughs> a lot of us hate counting stitches, which I totally get, and this is gonna be a great project for that. However, every five or so rows, I recommend you count. That way you can make sure you're staying on track, on count, and you don't get 20 rows in, and for some reason your top's doing something funky or the sides aren't straight, and you're like, what happened? And it turns out you dropped a stitch somewhere and it's now not straight, and it's now like 20 rows back, <laughs> or, or 15 rows back, and you have to face, I have to take out all of that work, you know? If you can count every five rows, it's a lot easier to undo five rows than it is to undo 15 rows, 20 rows, you know what I mean? So, periodically count. That's big tip right there. And every row will be that way, so just make sure you're staying on track there and you'll know you're done with that row. Easy peasy. So like I said, every row that we are doing for this particular section is going to be one half double crochet stitch between each stitch space. So chain one, turn, half double crochet, okay? We are making a rectangular section. We are going to be working up to the chest area where right before we do those triangles. Okay, look at the chart. The chart will tell you, depending on what size that you are making, what row you're gonna stop at, okay, before we start doing the triangles. So continue on, again, chain one, turn our work, and half double crochet between stitches. If you need to pull the work to make it easier to see, do so, I know sometimes I do, but starting in row three here, it should be a lot easier for you to see where you're placing that crochet hook. Right, you've got this, you really do. I have full confidence that you can make it to the next step without me. Again, remember that this yarn is splitty, so take your time with it, try not to get frustrated with it. Now let me show you the join method that I love so much, because you're going to need to join yarn before you finish this rectangular section. I already know. So let me show you the invisible knot join that I love. I use with every single project. It is my tried and true. 
and I am obsessed, okay? So let's pretend that you've been crocheting, 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 and you're running out of yarn. You need to join more yarn to your project so you can keep going. Okay, so take your project here, have the working yarn, go in one direction, grab your new skein of yarn, have that yarn go in the opposite direction, okay? Take those two strands and bud them up against each other. Take two fingers, wrap the two strings around your two fingers, take the little tail here, go over the yarn strands between your two fingers, there we go, and have that tail come out facing your fingernails, okay? Grab that tail, remove your fingers and pull for a knot. Great, so you have one knot right there. Let's move our fingers. I'm actually going to pull that a little bit. Okay. Take your two strands, other hand, two fingers. Wrap the two strands around your two fingers. Take that tail, go over the strands between your fingernail or your fingers. Ah, and have it pop through towards your fingernails. Grab that tail, remove your fingers. Just pull for a knot. Now we have two knots here. Grab the yarn attached to the work. Grab the yarn attached to the new skein of yarn. Pull and those knots will come in towards each other and form a very strong knot. You can actually cut the tails really close to that knot and it stays secure. I know sometimes I would worry, oh no, I'm cutting too close to the knot, it's gonna un come undone. Never happens with this knot. And I've been doing this a long time. Super, super strong. And then you keep going. And you don't have anything, see there's the knot. You won't have anything to come back and weave in, nothing to address. It's done, you can just move on. So awesome, works great. And with this price of yarn, we don't wanna waste anything. We don't want to stop at the end of a row and cut our yarn and waste all of that material, especially when you're working with something, a material that's a little more expensive. We don't wanna be wasteful, okay? So if that works for you to switch your yarn at the end of a row, go for it. If, if it works best for you, do what works best for you. But for me, this invisible knot trick, guys, I've already worked past it. Do you see it? Anywhere? It camouflages in. You can't see it, but it's technically, technically right there. And I can only see that because I'm like really close. <laughs> so again, that's called the invisible knot join. If you would like to use it, I'm would love for you to use it. Just have a, a special trick in your back pocket. Otherwise, go ahead and continue on working row after row after row until you reach that last row and I'll meet you there and we'll start working those triangular sections at the top of the tank top. All right, so this is the last half double crochet stitch in the last row for my rectangular section that I'm making for the tank top. Next, we're gonna start working on those triangle sections. So you can refer to the chart, refer to row one of the triangle, and you should know how many stitches it wants you to do in the first row of the triangle. How I got that number. I took the number of stitches that I have across the row. For me in this demo, I have 25 stitches. Subtract one, 24 stitches, and divide that number by two, because we got two triangles. So 24 divided by two is 12. So I'm gonna have 12 half double crochet stitches in row one of my triangle. So I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work and make 12 half double crochet stitches, again, between the stitch spaces. Two, three, 11 and 12, perfect, and then we're gonna stop. And that is all the stitches we are going to do in this first row of the triangle. Okay, moving on to the next row. We're gonna chain one, turn our work, 
Now for this row and every row to the top of that triangle, we're gonna start with a decrease half double crochet and then one half double crochet in every stitch between to the last two stitch spaces and then decrease half double crochet the last two stitch spaces together. Now a good way to keep track of what's going on is you're going to decrease half double crochet, so yarn over, insert your crochet hook between the two stitch spaces, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, insert your crochet hook between the next two stitch spaces, yarn over, pull through. You should have five loops on your crochet hook here. Yarn over, pull through all five loops for that decrease half double crochet stitch. Then make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch across. This number should be an even number. So if you count to an odd number, you either need to subtract a stitch or add a stitch, okay? Because you want to have two stitch spaces here at the end that we will decrease half double crochet. So I have one, two, eight, perfect. Again, make sure that number is an even number and then decrease half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your crochet hook into the stitch space, yarn over, pull through. Now remember that there is a stitch we're going to insert between the last half double crochet and that chain to get to the next row. So yarn over again and insert your crochet hook between that last half double crochet and the turning chain. Yarn over, pull through. Again, five loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through all five loops. Great. And we're going to repeat what we just did for every single row on up. We're gonna chain one, turn our work, decrease half double crochet the first two stitch spaces together, make one half double crochet between each stitch space across and decrease half double crochet the last two stitch spaces together. So yarn over, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull, pull through, yarn over, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through the five loops on your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all five loops. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna continue on and I will meet you at the last two rows of the top of this triangle just to kind of go over that with you, make sure that we are on track, following everything smoothly, and that would be a good time for you to see if, uh-oh, I didn't, it's not matching up with Tiffany's, I might need to go back and fix something. Okay, I've made it to the last two rows at the top of the triangle. I have four stitch spaces here. I'm going to decrease the first two stitch spaces together. Great, then decrease the last two stitch spaces together. Now every single row should have been an even number. That's going to be a huge clue for you. If you get to the top here and you only have three stitches, that means somewhere in there you left a row on an odd number, okay? So you might wanna back it up and see where that was. You're just decreasing by two stitches as you go up the rows. Then we're gonna chain one, turn our work. Very last row is going to be a decrease half double crochet because there's only two stitch spaces left. We're just gonna decrease all that to one. Awesome. And this is roughly what you should be looking at. Now, obviously, depending on the size of the tank top that you are making, there's going to be a different number of stitches in every row. There's going to be a different number of rows that you need to accomplish because if you're making a larger size, you will have more of a triangle to make. If you're making a smaller size, you'll have less of a triangle to make. But all the rules will still apply. Every row will have an even number of stitches and every single row you will decrease half double crochet the first two stitches and the last two stitches all the way up. Okay, when you get to the top, cut a long enough tail for you to weave in the end at the end of the project. Then yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook for a tie off, pull tight. And we are now ready to go for the next triangle. So turn your work. So that way you are going to start working on the side of row one. Grab your yarn, create your slip knot, starting with a long enough tail for you to weave in that end. Great, attach your crochet hook. 
Let's go. So we're gonna start by slip stitching our yarn into the very first stitch space just to attach our yarn to the project. So slip, stitch, right like that. Perfect. Chain one, as if that's our turning chain to get us started. And then we are going to do exactly the same thing we did with the first triangle by making one half double crochet stitch in the first 12 stitch spaces, we want to leave that center stitch alone. That's gonna be important, that one stitch, that odd number, we're gonna leave that stitch alone to really help us when we go back and create a border around the whole top. It'll make it much easier to do so and make things cleaner. All right, so for me, I am making a half double crochet stitch in the first 12 stitches. So one, two, 11, 12, great. You'll see that stitch space that's empty. That's okay, we want that. Chain one, turn our work. All right, you guys know what to do. Half double, or decrease half double crochet, one half double crochet in every stitch in between and decrease half double crochet the last two stitches. I'll see you at the very top point of triangle number two to show you what we do next. Okay. Made it to the very top of triangle number two. Here we go. I'm tying off the work. Perfect. Okay, so that is panel number one. It can either be the front panel or the back panel, doesn't really matter. What you wanna do next is repeat this process one more time. The front panel and the back panel look identical in this project, okay? To make it easy peasy, nothing crazy, just simple. We are making the front panel the exact same as the back panel. So repeat everything you just did for this section one more time, and then we will come back, we will join them together, make the border on the top, and add the straps. This is super exciting. I hope you are enjoying the process. Great, now we have both panels ready to go and we are ready to start joining them together. So take your one panel, doesn't matter which, place it over the top of the next panel. We don't need to weave in our ends yet. It's okay, it's fine. If you want to, you can, but I'm waiting, I'm holding off on that. All right, take your yarn needle or tapestry needle and the same exact yarn we used for the project Go ahead and cut a significant amount of yarn. If you don't cut enough, it's okay. You can always come back and attach more. Thread your yarn through your yarn needle. Great. And I like to start at the bottom, joining, starting at the bottom and working my way up. So I'm gonna take my yarn needle and I'm going to insert it on the bottom most first stitch or first space between the turning chain and the first half double crochet. And then same thing on the second panel. And then I'm going to tie a knot. This is how I'm gonna join. Leaving a long enough tail for me to weave in that end when, at the end of the project when I'm ready to come back and clean stuff up. So I'm gonna knot once and I'm going to knot twice. Great. Then you're going to take your yarn needle and you are going to keep all of your pieces together. If you would like, you can use stitch markers to make sure everything is staying in line with each other and nothing is shifting. Otherwise, every row should be in line with each other. It should be a one-to-one -one ratio you should, because everything's identical. So you should be able to just go in one stitch and through the adjoining stitch and then over and then coming back. Great. And then, ah, and then come over. Now you don't have to do anything sp specific. This does not have to be pretty. Honestly, if you want to make sure it is super secure, you can make these stitches even shorter. What's nice is we are using the exact same yarn that we used for the main body. So it should camouflage and hide really, really well. So even if you do a sloppy job, this is gonna be on the inside of the tank top. So it's not a big deal, okay? Just do whatever you can to make sure that your join is secure, that you're not skipping any stitches, that there are no significant gaps 
between each stitch that you make. That way you're good to go. We are going to continue up this side to the bottom of the triangle. I do not want you to join or work into the triangle, okay? So stop here at the bottom of the triangle and then I will meet you there and we'll join or we'll go to the next side. Awesome, when you make your way all the way to the top here, again, before you tie off, double check to make sure that there are no significant gaps here because now's the time you can go back and fix that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. I'm gonna stretch it out and see if I see any major holes and I do not, so I'm ready to tie off my work. So how I'm tying off my work, I'm going to insert my yarn needle as if I was making another stitch from the back forward. But I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna hold back that yarn so it doesn't make its way all the way through. I'm gonna take that yarn and I'm gonna twist it. I have this tail right here in the way. Twist it so it makes this cool X shape here. I'm gonna take my yarn needle, go underneath both loops through that big loop there, and I'm gonna slowly feed it. That way it doesn't join the knot high up on the strand. I wanna control where that knot lands. There we go. And then cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail for you to weave in that end and make sure it's extra secure. Flip the tank top over and repeat on this side, this join, exactly what we did on the other side there. All right, and tying off my second side here. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Great, now that the sides are joined, let's go ahead and weave in all of our ends. Just clean everything up, weave in all of these ends. That way we can then go and actually crochet a border around the top and everything is out of our way. This is how I weave in my ends. If you wanna weave in yours the same as me, that's great. If not, you have your own way. Do whatever works best for you. If you do want some ideas on different ways to weave in your ends, I do have a video that I will put a card at the top of the screen for if you'd like to check out that video and see all these different ways that you can do this. The trick that I do that I really like is I will double back and I will go backwards. And that seems to really help secure things for me. And it's the joining or the weaving that I really like hold to make sure I didn't like scrunch any section up and then cut flush. All right, so that's how I weave in my ends. I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing this whole project, weaving in all the ends, and then we will come back and we will do the border. We're almost done, guys. This is super exciting. All right, we have just cleaned up all of our tails, woven in all of our ends. We are now ready to move on to the next step. So our tank top is inside out right now. Let's go ahead and flip it inside right. Perfect. And we are going to work on making a single crochet border along the top to clean everything up. So taking our yarn and our crochet hook, starting with the tail long enough for us to weave in our end. Create our slip knot, attach our crochet hook. Awesome. Okay, I like to start on the side of the work where there's already all the joins and it's a very easy place to hide all of your tails. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a slip stitch to attach my yarn to the project. And I'm going to look at this join, follow it all the way up and then attach slip stitch into the first stitch space that I see right there right after that join. Great. Chain one, single crochet into the same stitch you just slip stitched into. Fabulous. All right, now how many rows did you make for your triangle? You can count them real quick, see how many you made. I know if you need to stretch out your work, go ahead and stretch it out again. Find that one row where there's a single or a stitch that we didn't put anything in and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you will need to make one single crochet stitch in the side of every row. And knowing how many rows you got really helps, so it keeps you on track. And at the very top, or for me it would be seven, you're going to make three 
single crochet stitches in that top stitch to kind of get you over that top of the triangle. One, two, three, then turn. Now that third single crochet does count as your first single crochet stitch working your way down the other side of the triangle. If you need to, just follow your half double crochets. Just kind of glide across. Oh, there's the side of that row. Six, I can lost count. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five. And that was this row. So next half double crochet down. Six. Next half double crochet down, seven, awesome. So there is my first triangle. Single crochet into the stitch that has nothing in it. And that kind of braces us for a really smooth transition to the next triangle. All right, so go ahead and repeat what we just did for this triangle. When you come to the bottom, you'll see the join. Skip the join and go straight to the following triangle. Okay, so you're gonna come down, for me it'd be seven, and then go back up, for me seven, then down and up. On the other side of the tank top, make sure you place a single crochet stitch in that stitch space that there, ha there is no stitch in. Okay, right in between the two triangles. Six and seven, perfect. Just made my way all the way around, cutting a long enough tail for me to weave in my end tying off my work here. Awesome, pulling that tight. And then I'm gonna take these two tails and I'm gonna tie them together, secure them together. One, two. Awesome, and I will weave in those ends at the end of the project. What we are going to do next is the last step, which are the straps, making the straps on our tank top. So grabbing our crochet hook, and our yarn. Making sure your tank top is flat the way you want it, where this is the front and this is the back and the sides are actually on the sides. You don't want to connect this way with the sides straight down the middle. So make sure your tank top is laying the way you want the front and the back to be. Starting with your tail long enough for you to weave in your ends. Slip knot. Attach crochet hook, great. So I'm going to slip stitch to attach to one of the top triangles. Now this part is adjustable. I really liked the count of 12 chains. If you want your strap to be longer or shorter, adjust this however is going to fit you best. But I really liked the look of 12 chains. So after you slip stitch into the top of that triangle, chain 12. One, two, 12, great. And then single crochet into the top of the next triangle on the opposite side. Single crochet, single crochet again in that same spot. So make two single crochet stitches and then turn your work without chaining. Look at your chains and make one single crochet stitch in each chain all the way back across for a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So find those V stitches and go. 12, great. Okay, single crochet into the top of that next point. Single crochet in that point one more time for a total of two single crochet stitches. Turn your work, do not chain and make your way back one more time for a total of three rows, or two rows, one chain. 12, great, single crochet one more time in the top of that triangle or that peak, single crochet, and then we're gonna tie off. So grabbing our scissors, cut long tail, tie off our work, and that is strap number one. Now, if you have a twisted strap, it twisted for some reason. It's okay. What we are going to do is when we weave in the end of that strap, make sure that the strap is not twisted, like take the twist out and take that tail that you have left over and make sure that you sew 
attach that strap in a straight way. Okay, it makes it really, really easy to fix if you did accidentally twist it. I think I did that with one of my demos and I was like, oh, okay, this is something I definitely wanna mention in the tutorial. All right, and then really just kind of weave in your ends. And if you want to make sure that everything is super strong, you can come in and then just go through the strap over and over to strengthen that strap a little bit more. I would recommend if you did go through the strap to go ahead and tie a little knot just to make sure it doesn't like un undo on you. And continue to weave in that end. There we go. So that is how I would weave in my ends for a strap. But that is one strap, strap number one. And so it's not exactly a spaghetti strap. There is a little bit more uh, width to it. If you're somebody where straps bother you if they're too thin, this is actually a great technique because feel free to add as many rows as you want to make this as thick as you want for your shoulders and make it as comfortable as you want for your shoulders. Again, every time I make some kind of wearable, I try to make everything adjustable so that way it is most comfortable for you. So Finish up on this strap, move over to the second strap, work the second strap, and then we're done. The tank top is done. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and finish off this tutorial. All right, guys, and that's it. That is the Nubu tank top. Super simple, super lush, and I hope you love it. All right guys, what did you think of the Nubu tank top? Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the process of constructing your Nubu tank top. Was it as simple for you as I was hoping it to be? Also, let me know what you thought of working with the Nubu yarn. I'd love your feedback. If you liked this video, please push that thumbs up button. It's like a big high five and lets me know if you liked the video. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell. That way you get notified when I release brand new videos. I have some great videos coming up and you're not gonna wanna miss out. If you would like to support my channel or just like a little bit more out of my channel in general, check out my membership program. I have a couple different levels there that I think you will really enjoy. If you liked this video, let's keep it going. Watch these videos right here, which are more wearable videos that I have made, or check out this video, which is a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. Remember, don't just crochet something to crochet something. Make a memory. I'll see you at the next one, guys. Bye.